And so many different things happened in his life. Benny, at age 80, declared to all of his family, he said, listen, I'm not going to go hunting anymore. It was a big deal. He loved to hunt. Tears were running down his cheeks. I'm not able to go hunting. We thought he was getting, you know, thinking he was going to pass away or something. He lived at what, 92 or 93? 93. But you see, he had made a deal with the Lord. He said, Lord, I'm going to take the time I would have spent hunting and preparing for hunting and thinking about hunting, and I'm going to pray for all of my friends. I'm going to intercede for them. And I just want one thing, God, before I die, let me win all my acquaintances that I have coffee with down at the coffee shop with to the Lord. And one after another, they all came to Jesus. Come on, I'm just here today to tell you that the spirit of the living God is powerful and it's real. And God is looking for men and women today to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And then number three, a spirit-filled father reacts gracefully under provocation. Acts chapter 6, verses 9 through 14. We're not going to read those verses, but we're going to read, you can read about the terrific onslaught made by religious people upon Timothy, on Stephen. They disputed with him. They secured men to be false witnesses. They made a wicked plot up and accused him falsely. But all of this, he refused to be discouraged. Can you imagine what that must have felt like for Stephen? Though all he'd been doing was the works of the Lord and all this whole religious crowd comes against him. And, and we wonder, well, how did he react? How did this spirit-filled man react? Was he mad? Was he angry? Did he swear that he would get vengeance on them? No. I want you to notice Acts chapter 6 and verse 15. It's an interesting commentary on this man. He said, And all who sat in the council, looking steadfastly at him, saw his face, as the face of an angel. Wow. <laughs> he wasn't mad, no. He wasn't upset, no. He knew God was in control. That's interesting commentary. God must have given him such a supernatural peace that it even affected the way he looked. He looked like an angel. If he had been come riled up and was angry and retaliated, you know, understood his feelings, and you know, and, and you know, told his feelings, we we would have understood that. But under this tremendous pressure of being coming against by so many different people, his face looked like an angel. There are many fathers today who've been under some type of provocation and have stood the test. You know. We, you know, we, we may never go through a persecution exactly like Stephen did. But, uh, men, when we're going through a trial, when we're facing financial crisis, when we're going to that big meeting on the job, right, when, when we feel the stress, when our boss or a client gets on us for no reasons, when the kids are acting up or acting out, come on. I have a question for you. Does the Holy Spirit have enough control that it can even affect your face where they go, man, that guy sat in that business meeting and his face looked like an angel? I don't know if I should say this, but what's our face look like when somebody cuts us off in traffic? Amen. <laughs> Preaching to myself this morning. Come on, somebody. How I many of that would be a great testimony to our children, right? Come on. Amen. That even under fire, guess what? We got peace. We got it together. You know why? Because the King of kings and the Lord of lords, King Jesus, resides on the inside. God, our Father's our Heavenly Father, and we know the plans that He has for us, that nothing can stop Him. Come on. All the good and goodness and mercy is going to follow us all the days of our lives. We're going to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So what are we going to worry about? Come on. It's time to let our faces know that King Jesus is on the throne today. Come on. Give the Lord a big hand of praise today. Amen. Amen. Number four, he was a spirit, a spirit filled father, is all is mighty in the scriptures. Amen. I love men who love to talk about God's word. Now, don't get me wrong. I'll talk about a lot of different things, but I like to talk about the word of God. Amen. Because it's so real. Amen. And we need to know and read and study the Word if we're going to maintain a Spirit-filled life. A couple of things you need to know about the Word of God is that it was inspired by the Holy Spirit. 
Right? It was, it's God breathed. God breathed upon the people who wrote down the words. And I believe it's inspired and inerrant. And, and uh, I believe in the Word of God. And the Bible tells us that the Holy Spirit's our teacher. Has anybody ever been taught anything by the Holy Spirit? You say, well, Pastor, I've tried to read the Bible, but it's just a little bit confusing. Let me tell you, if that ever happens to you, just start praying. Say, Holy Spirit, I need you to enlighten me here. Just teach me and let me understand this. Let me tell you something. The Holy Spirit is a great teacher. It says this, John 14 says, But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to remembrance all things that I said to you. So not only does he teach you the Word of God, He'll help you remember it. Amen. At a moment when you need it, you haven't read that verse, all of a sudden it'll pop into your mind and you'll be able to get it. Come on. How many of you believe the Holy Spirit's powerful? And obviously Stephen was a man who knew the Word of God. God is looking for some men who are armed and dangerous. Hello? Come on. Do you got your sword? Do you have it? Do you know how to use it? This is the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Now, I'm not going to read all of Acts chapter 7. That seemed like I'd take about the rest of my time here today. But practically all of Acts chapter 7 is Stephen's defense of, of who he was, of the gospel. And as you read that, you're going to see that guy knew the Bible, right? He knew the Old Testament. Obviously, he knew the Scriptures because he quoted them so freely. He believed the Scriptures. He preached the Scriptures. His message was all Bible. He presented the Christ of the Scriptures. Come on. He applied the Scriptures to his hearers. In fact, he applied the Scriptures so fiercely, so strongly, that they got so angry that they put him to death. Come on. How many of you know that we've got to preach the truth of Jesus Christ? Come on. We've got to preach what this word says. Amen. I'll tell you, when I was a young man, young pastor, I used to do a lot of my Bible reading at the office at the church. Then one day I was at Benny's house, my father-in-law's house, and I saw him and the Holy Spirit said, you need to read the Bible at home. Come on. You know why? That's good advice for every dad. Read the Bible at home. Let the kids see you read it. Let the grandkids see you read it. Come on. You know what? I believe in the Word of God. Amen. And I thank God for it. Hallelujah. Amen. Because when you put the Bible first, it says God is important and His Word is important. You say, well, what's a Spirit-filled Father like? He knows, loves, and preaches the Bible, presents Christ in the Scriptures, and applies them to His own life and the lives to whom He ministers. Is He perfect? Probably not. Come on. Amen. We not, None of us have attained yet, but we're pressing on. Colossians 3.16 says this, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing it grace in your hearts to the Lord. The word of God will show you how to live. And I'm look, God is looking for people and men to be mighty in the word. And you're not going to get mighty in the word if you're mighty in the tube, if you're mighty on the screen. Amen. Uh, you you got to be mighty in the word by taking some time every single day to read the word of God. Number five, a spirit filled father will be sustained in this greatest hour of adversity and difficulty. I'm going to tell you some bad news today. Every single person on the planet goes through adversity. I wish I could preach a gospel that said, once you give your life to Jesus, man, that's it. Smooth sailing after that. No problems. But that's just not the way it is. Jesus Christ himself said, in this world, you're going to have tribulations. There's troubles in the world. But he also said this, be of good cheer. He's overcome the world, right? And Stephen was about to face the most difficult hour of his life. He was about to be stoned as a martyr. That would be tough. Now, probably none of us will face that, but there's going to come a moment that's going to be the most difficult hour in your life, right? A moment when the phone rings and the news comes and it's not pleasant. That hour when you need God to sustain you. That hour when you need God to hold you up. That hour when you need supernatural strength to make it through. Loss comes into every life. Sorrow hits every life. That moment when life comes, when you have tribulation. But I'm here today to tell you that if 
you are filled with the spirit of the living God, you will understand that God can undergird you with his power and with his strength. I want you to picture the scene, all right? There was this man named Stephen, and he was about to be stoned. In fact, they'd already started hurling the stones at him. What was he doing? Was he feeling sorry for himself? Was he crying? Was he overwhelmed with it all, crying out for mercy? No. The amazing thing is that the scripture says that Stephen kept his peace and his dignity. Come on. He did not go under, but he rode out the storm or that trial victoriously. He had just preached a powerful message. Let me tell you what happened. Acts 7 verse 54. It says, but when they heard these things, they were cut to the heart and they gnashed at him with their teeth. But he, notice once again, he was full of the Holy Spirit. It says, he being full of the Holy Spirit, he gazed into heaven. Come on, I'm just here today to tell you, when the world's giving you trouble, look up, my friend. When the enemy's coming against you, that's all right. Keep your eyes on heaven. Come on, because this is not your home. You're just a sojourner here. You're just passing through as a traveler. Come on, keep your eye on heaven. And that's what he did. He gazed into heaven and he saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. I've always liked that, all right? Because the scripture says that Jesus sat down at the right hand of God. But let me tell you something. When, when Stephen was going through his hour of trial, you want to know what happened? Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, said, hey, that's one of my sons. That's one of my children down there. And he stood up to his feet. And I'm I'm here today to tell you this is what I believe I believe he's getting up and down up and down you want to know why because when you're going through your hour of trial when it's difficult when it's hard when you call out to King Jesus I'm here today to tell you that he'll answer you he'll be there for you come on somebody give the Lord a hand of praise in this house today what we need what we need in those moments is a new revelation of Jesus Amen of who he is. I remember years ago, a very young as a young man, I was probably about Jose's age, pastoring a church in Stanford, Texas, looking at impossible changes in my future, feeling uh, distressed. I mean, I was under pressure, didn't know what to do, didn't know how to handle it. So I went into my office and I got down on the floor. And I began to pray, and I began to pray in the Holy Spirit, and I began to intercede, and I began to just began to just pray in my prayer language. For about 35 or 40 minutes, I prayed that way. Tears coming out of my eyes. At the end of that time, I want to tell you, something happened. It was supernatural. The very peace of Almighty God filled my spirit, filled my heart, filled my life. I got up from that place, and for three days, I had a sense of the tangible presence and the peace of God. I woke up with it. I went on a walk with it. I went into, I went to Piggly Wiggly with it. Yes, there is a grocery store named Piggly Wiggly, all right? Went to Piggly Wiggly with it. I mean, it was there everywhere that I went. Come on. I'm just here today to tell you that in your moment of hour of trial, when you need God, let me tell you something. Go to him. Turn to him. That's what I wish I could get across to every individual in this house in that moment because it's going to come in that moment. Listen, there's a God that will hear your prayer. There's a God that will come to your rescue. There's a God who's real and who's powerful. Come on, give him praise today. 